We are finally on season two of ReZero, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do this for every episode, but if I have time, if I just feel like it, I think that just doing a little recap analysis for me is just also good to just keep my head fresh of what's going on. So we start the episode off and arc three has not concluded. This is still arc three, like the events of this episode, according to any news, the end, this concludes arc three as Subaru regains, you know, faith and resolve back with Emilia helping out. In the beginning, Petra <laughs> seemingly is entering the gauntlet. That's right. Petra is also showing affection for Subaru. We've seen this actually earlier on. And even in Memory Snow, if we think about it, Petra also won the snowman competition, right? And then was given the potato chips that Romji ate in one of those first runs. The <laughs> well... Honestly, is Rem still in the running? Because, like, nobody even knows who Rem is. So I'm not sure if I can include Rem in the pecking order. But we have Emilia, Patrash, Petra, Rem. That's, that's, that's a pretty... That's, like, a rough list, man. And this part... It was kind of weird how the intro scene I thought was supposed to be just funny and happy. But with the glaring background, right... This glaring light of the background as Subaru tries to figure out, like, how should I tell Amelia about Rem? You know, in episode 18, she said, I love you, but I kind of said, I love Amelia, and I'm pursuing Amelia instead. So, I think I mentioned a couple times that I think Subaru is unaware of Rem's romantic affections due to the uh, amount of negligence and, like, lack of responses or, like, reciprocation of those romantic gestures obviously because he loves Amelia but if he has if he feels the need to, to tell Amelia about the whole Rem thing I think it pretty much confirms that yeah he is very aware it's just that he's gonna pursue the half elf instead and this turned from a funny comedic running gag moment where Natsuki super like even this too right look at his face this is supposed to be like a cute funny moment and then this blank stare, and I'm like, oh no, something feels off. It feels like that time where we told Ram about Rem, and she just stared at us in a blank face and says, Who's Rem? Rem. Is that a name I should know? That is so cruel. Because in episode, like, in arc 3, we already had it when the fog of elimination from the white whale killed Rem, and she was forgotten. And I thought that would be it. Honestly, even at that point, even though we regressed, I thought that maybe the White Whale's powers would transcend timelines and would still stick so people would forget. That's why I was like, do people still know her name? And when Felix conferred a name, I was like, okay, okay, that's pretty good. But we're back here, man. <laughs> Rem is gone. <laughs> and we get a huge hype scene, right? I, I think this part of the dialogue is also ironic because we talk about like love interest. Super between Rem and Krush. And Rem also tells Krush that, like, you would look better with a smile, right? Because Krush has been born into this position of leadership, trying to be like a military commander. She needs to be strong. She can't be all uwu dere dere, right? She's gotta be strong. She's gotta be charismatic. And Rem says, you'd be quite charming with a smile. And the only moments that she really smiles is when she loses her memories later on, where she's a lot more feminine, right? Which is kind of sad, but it's also nice to see a different side of Krush. Boom, Regulus attacks. But the dude apparently showed up out of coincidence. Like, Gluttony showed up because the White Whale died. But, fucking Greed, Regulus, apparently, he was just chilling. This is just like a really unlucky situation where two fucking Arc Bishops show up. First carriage goes up. I don't know what's happening. Every time Krush, I'm sorry, Regulus uses his powers, it's like a howling sound. And I had a theory that maybe, maybe because we're hearing some sort of howling creature sound that the powers are some sort of like invisible creature, like some sort of invisible creature that's like floating around and that's why it looks like he has Mugen Infinity like Gojo Satoru but instead it's like a creature that's blocking the attacks but with by hearing more Aninus's, uh, uh comments about how his powers even work I think it's a bit different so everything gets shredded up all these characters get shredded up Rem can only save Krush here all these other people they die apparently Rem thought about saving the other people too and the land dragon maybe but hey I'm sorry the only thing that we're saving is Krush, and she is the priority. Rest in peace, other people. And apparently from the light novel passage, this is an extraordinary average-looking man. Appar like, he looks dripped the fuck out. In terms of, like, 
charisma, drip aura. Like, I look at him, I'm like, yeah, I probably don't want to fight him. But the light novel apparently describes him as a very average dude. Everything is in, sh in tatters. Everything is shredded. What powers is this? Ordering them to trample me when I'm just minding my own business. Professional victim. Yap. God. He, he, he was just standing in the middle of the road, I guess. Right? And if you really listen to him, he kind of sounds reasonable. He says like, bro, I'm minding my own business in the middle of the road. And you told me to attack? Well, we told you to run you down because the front carriages were being shredded up. But he'll probably have an excuse for that as well. It's like, I was just taking a walk. And you decided to hit me with these carriages. You, des you deserve this shit. That's not something someone with any sense of decency would do. How dare you brutalize my retainers? Who are you? Archbishop of Greed. You're a candidate to be the next ruler of this nation. How did he know that? Does Regulus just know of the all... I don't know. Is there newspapers? Is there like heads of like Priscilla, Anastasia, Regulus? I, I, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's newspapers, right? It's common knowledge? Got it, got it, got it. So it's not like... He could tell that he, she is a candidate by her aura, but it's public, it's public news. Now that's just plain mean, but I suppose one could never hope to rule a country without some degree of arrogance. Arrogance tied with pride. This here? So, watching the Annie News video taught us that this is the one fold 100 attacks or some shit, I forget. But this green blade? See, in the anime season 1, I thought that this is a property of the Phantom Sword. The blade without no regard for range. I thought that these attacks were just like weapon diff. Like if you've seen Danmachi, you know those like sacred swords, those OP magic swords, you swing it, huge magic attacks happen. I thought this was this, but actually that's not the case. Because the Phantom Sword is with Wilhelm right now, and she's using a regular sword, and this is just her skill that she combines with her blessing of the wind shit and wind magic. Now look here. Who taught you it was acceptable to swing a sword at someone happily chatting away? And like, what would happen if we entertained them? If we entertained them and try to converse and try to like diffuse the situation through diplomacy, would it work or is he trolling us? I still want to try it out. Maybe he just wants to yeah. Maybe he just wants maybe he just wants someone to listen, bro. All we have to do is just sit here and just listen to him. And then maybe he'd be happy about it and he would reward us. I'm not sure. He loves yapping though. And then here, right over here, right? So this is very interesting. Notice how Crucia's arm gets cut off cleanly. Apparently. What happened here, according to any news? Regulus created some sort of wind vortex above him. And then the area around the wind vortex seemingly shattered. And then Crucius' arm was cleanly cut off to the point Rem made the comment of it being, wow, what a amazing surgical clean cut. It doesn't really, based on any news' descriptions, it doesn't sound like Regulus, like, pointed the attack towards her because the shit was happening above him. But the arm is getting cut off in a vertical way. The more I think about it, is this some sort of like dimensional cutting shit? Because the wording of the area around the wind vortex being shattered sounds like the dimension is being cut up. So like, if you've seen Isekai Shikaku, I, <laughs> he definitely aimed at her. Any news is telling me one thing, I'm just using the fucking material that I have with. I'm thinking like, this is some sort of like, Dimensional hole being erased, uh, just like the fucking fallen angel of gluttony in Isekai Shikaku with that one attack. Who knows? But you can always hear some sort of like howling noise every time there's an intentional sound effect that happens. Gluttony shows up, and this guy, Lai, he's 13 years old. And he looks like he's from Made in the Abyss, too. 13 year old kid. How do you become like this at the age of 13? What kind of life do you need to lead to become an archbishop at the age of 13? Was he born in the cult? Was he a prodigy within the cult? Mm -mm. Crazy that he's 13 though. I mean, then again, Felt is 15, but like, I don't know. Felt being like a homeless kid that was 
Somehow a chosen for the role of Canada that makes more sense than a 13-year-old from a fucking cult of the witches. You know what I mean? He has like these daggers that he uh, wields on his hands like Wolverine. Lai, Baten, Kaitos, Regulus, Corneas, and remember, Regulus just showed up, showed up just out of coincidence. He's just chilling. Lai intentionally showed up because his pet whale has been slain. Our pet has been slain, and look at this bounty. He's so happy about this too. And every time, he he, he does act a little bit more like Betrugus than Regulus does, right? The mannerisms, even like this pose, the way they continuously spam alliterations of superb, splendid, blah, blah, blah. His outfit is fucking crazy. This is the deepest v-neck that I've ever seen. See, this is the part. Betrugus does this shit all the time. Alliterations. Swell, super, super, splendid, right? Regulus doesn't do that. And how long it has been since our hunger was so thoroughly sated. So, when I was watching this anime episode, I was a bit confused about why he was so happy. Because I thought he'd be upset that the whale was killed. But what he's happy about here is the memories and the names that he could devour from Rem, right? That's what he's so happy about, leaning into gluttony. You can relax. I'm nothing like that guy there. I hate fighting and stuff. Like, dialogues like this makes me really hope that we can be friends with Regulus. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe he's lying. Maybe he's capping. But does he not seem reasonable? Right? He's straight up saying I hate fighting and stuff. I'm not like that guy. Give him a chance! What would happen if you tried diplomacy with them? All that hunger and thirst nonsense. Were you even listening? See how mad he gets because Rem, you know... <laughs> it's, Rem? Just aggro a hostile NPC here. Were you even listening? Did I just say I hate fighting? Well, if Rem didn't do anything, what would have happened? Gluttony would have fucking ate her name and memory regardless. It's Rem going down with like a last stand, which I can respect. A hero sounds like a ball. And then we talk about AU Subaru, right? I love this part where Rem says she introduces herself as the head maid of the mansion of Margrave Roswell Elmaders, but then she says no. And currently, the caretaker of my one and only love. Like, the little head tilt here, right? Kind of goes to show, like, her pride as being Subaru's caretaker is more important than being the head maid, right? That's what I think that head shake was. Horn comes out. I promise you, my hero will soon be here. <laughs> if only, bro. But apparently, in the other runs where Subaru tried, like, uh, it was apparently a situation where you could only save a million rim. So maybe it is a situation where he could have showed up in time. I'm not really sure. A 1v2. It's kind of crazy, huh? Rem is, like, fighting against Mr. Lai over and over again. He's, like, airborne. And I'm not sure exactly what happened here. There was a moment where Regulus found an opening, even though he said he hates fighting. And he, like... Stops Rem. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. If I look closely at like Rem's body, you can see like after images, uh, like, like you see these like effects, right? These like impact effects, but like it's shockwaves, yeah. But like what's inside here, right? You see the shockwaves? So the force is coming from within outwards. And then it looks like something is like seizing Rem or maybe I'm crazy. comes from within. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, bro. This 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 shit feels this, this shit feels really weird. But he like What did he do here? I don't know. Cuz her hairpin gets like destroyed, but her clothing doesn't. It just looked like he like paralyzed her for a second with this wind shit, but uh, I don't know, man. Maybe it was like a shock from within, like from within, some sort of, like, wind explosion shit. Halted her. Here comes the kid. And he bites into the memories of Rem. As she remembers the different, you know, fanfic that she had in episode 18 about going to Kararagi, right? The family that we could have had. Thank you for the feast. And the imagery here of Rem's memory just slowly, just, you know, name and memory being erased. Boom. Done. Crazy shit, dude. Rem 1v2'd. 2 Arc bishops. Crazy, 
Shit. I think she did a pretty good job. It was an un it was an unwinnable battle, but Regulus's powers. Something about wind pressure shit, sound effects, and lie. Seems to be a mainly combatist with his daggers on his arms like uh, Wolverine. And his thing is all about like eating the names and memories of people, right? And what was the mechanics, right? So Rem got her name and memories eaten away and everyone doesn't remember who Rem is. But Subaru specifically does. How come nobody asks why Subaru remembers? Think about that. Why does nobody ask Subaru like how do you still know Rem? Like, why do you know Rem? Because, like, in the white whale part where Rem was forgotten, of course, only Subaru knew. No one really challenged him, but I thought that it's because of his Witch's Miasma and the connection to Sato, that's why he can remember this shit, because this is, like, cult powers. It makes sense to me. But everyone else, I don't know. That's, that's still what I'm going to assume with why he knows. And what happens? Rem memories and name erased, so people don't know who Rem is, and everything that Rem has done in the past too gets kind of like scripted to like make her disappear per se. Like her room before it was furnished when Rem existed, but Rem's memories and name got eaten away. Then there is, it's like unfurnished, right? It, it just shows that Rem never existed in the mansion. But Krush, on the other hand, is like a form of amnesia where. Lie can't- well, it wasn't shown in the anime, maybe it was off-screen, but by the explanations of Puck, right? Krush is another example where the memories were eaten away, but not to the degree of, like, people forgetting who Krush is. It's just, like, Krush forgetting herself, because only the memory were eaten away. And that's pretty much that. Really hype episode just right off the start. But, I mean, I wish for this, right? I said that I wanted to see more Archbishops over and over again, but damn, two- in the first episode, it's, it's just, this is what happens. Monkey's paw, man. Actually, monkey's paw shit. This is some sad stuff. We get to see Rem. Subaru gets very upset. There's nothing the healers can do. He decides to end himself. And I think I said that I would have killed myself immediately. And someone said, well, dying is scary. You know what's more scary? Having Rem be forgotten and erased, that's way more scary. So Subaru kills himself. Boom. But it's like, nah, bro, this is a checkpoint. By here, it's already too late. Please shut the fuck up about the blank letter. Let the fucking anime play it out. There is nothing that you should, like, of course you fucking know. But you're not supposed to fucking mention it. How are you this stupid? How are you every time mentioning the fucking blank letter over and over again when that fucking messenger was supposed to be on Crucius' side? Of course the implications are gonna happen future on. And I'm, I'm acting stupid so that like you motherfuckers can't spoil me. But Jesus Christ, just shut the fuck up and let me do my thing. Checkpoint. Too bad. Appa. Appa on the screen, remember? Forbidden Appa theory. What is the Forbidden Appa Theory? The Forbidden Appa Theory is anytime you see the Appas, it's like the Forbidden Fruit. You interact with it, bad shit happens. You don't interact with it, good shit happens. According to the cut content, Subaru used the Appa Pairing Knife to kill himself, to try to regress. In that example, the Forbidden Appa Theory of, you know, leaning into the apples, right? You know, I know it's just a knife, but it's an appa pairing knife. That resulted in bad runs, like nothing good happened. But in this run, he doesn't. There's a scene where he looks at the appas and the knife, but he decides not to reach forward. And then what happens? Amelia shows up, hugs him, head pat, we make her resolve, good. So another direct example of the anime, where this conspiracy schizo, appa theory, makes sense i don't know it's just always so interesting I, I i really really wish like i hope the oppa stuff happens more and more puck shows up and tells us about how gluttony works right authority of gluttony is power to consume so he's like how does that work lie chomped but she didn't he didn't bite rem's head like like I want to see like visually how the chomping works because like you're eating away the memories but do you like bite rem do you just like bite in front of rem right like like physically how does it look 
when he takes away the memories. That's kind of fun to think about. And then Puck also just deadbeat as usual because we know that he has an oath. Who knows who he signed it up with. Maybe a different witch. Maybe it's not Satella. Maybe it's someone completely different. But Puck has his reasons why he can't help. Krush. This part was weird. Because we finally find Krush. She lost her arm. But when I was hearing her talk, voice act, I'm like, something is off. Something has changed. Why does she seem a little more dainty than usual? It's because she lost her memories. And it's sad, man. Because, like, she said that, like, after the well subjugation that she would remember us. And how we'll always act in your favor, even if we're enemies. But all that's out the window, man. So fucking sad. This scene is all about Felix trying to hide his pains and act casual and try to disband the alliance, which does make sense because everything happened due to Amelia. Yes, it's not directly her fault, but the core root of the issue stems from Amelia. Maybe Felix was out of line there and, you know, Subaru blames it all on the witch's cult, but like, yes. Blaming on Amelia is like um, victim blaming, but it's still objectively correct. And Subaru is correct. We should be handling the witch's cult. I love how the gospel is showing up again. Remember, finale episode. Gospel came back to us even after throwing it away to Beth to the Goose. And then we sign it in our red blood. I hope this gospel gets a lot of like uh, lore or we get to know more about people that have gospels in this season. We're kind of fighting. We're kind of fighting, bantering. Felix gets corrected because he's like kind of speaking on behalf of Krush as well. When he says, let's, you know, uh, break off the alliance. And... It's kind of short-sighted. Maybe it is like this soft, like safe way out. But if you truly want the old Krush back, and if the only way to do it, and it's still an assumption, is to beat Gluttony, we need to make sure this alliance stands, right? Felix, thank you for worrying about me, but let me speak on my own behalf, right? It's like, I lost all these memories, but I want to know for myself, right? I will choose for myself. And you get to see here the old Krush, because even... If her memory is gone, Krush's identity, her soul, everything that made her who she is, is still there. So you get, to, you get to see kind of like glimpses of season one Krush. Felix breaks up in tears. It's a wholesome moment. But Felix was kind of the antagonist, the baddie, I guess, of the episode. Not really. He, he was just kind of just pushing back against the Alliance shit, which was maybe inconsiderate. But I thought that it was objectively... It made sense. And then... We talk about Roswell being the sanctuary. This part? Yeah, yeah, look at here. I want you guys to look at this scene. This is the moment that I'm talking about. About how Subaru was tempted by the forbidden fruit. And the paring knife right next to it. But because he rejects it. Because he rejects the forbidden fruit. Amelia shows up and this is a good run, right? We get to make a resolve back. Even if our fundamental pillar of emotional support is gone. Amelia will do that for us. She wants to share the burdens. And this is the conclusion of Arc 3. Where Subaru cries and breaks down. Makes sense. Amelia is there to catch him. And we make a resolve to attack. And that is the conclusion. But the craziest thing. The craziest shit here. Is the Wilhelm content. It's the Wilhelm content. About how Wilhelm has an injury from Teresia who had the blessing of the Grim Reaper where the injury doesn't open up unless you're near that person and for 14 years the wound has not opened up but finally it has after subjugating the White Will and the events of this episode so it's just like what the hell is happening right crazy that the anime didn't fucking tell us this shit but Wilhelm gained enough of Subaru's trust and told him that. So it's just like, oh my god. What is this? Edo Tensei Teresia? Is Teresia back? Is there someone else with that same blessing of the Grim Reaper? Is someone possessing Teresia's bodies and still has the blessing of the Grim Reaper? I don't know, man. But that shit gets me so fucking hyped, right? The Wilhelm stuff and the Archbishop stuff in the beginning. That's like the peak of the episode. And that's it for me. I'll see you next time.